this is something new for me. I have my new rocket stove. This rocket stove was built by students at the local high school. An uh, ad came up on my Facebook feed the other day on Marketplace. Uh, they were selling these, these stoves. It's a class project. They're building some of these stoves to teach welding and things like that. I will always, I, I feel real good about supporting something like that. I, I will totally support trades in high school any day of the week. And uh, anyway, so they were selling these. The price was remarkably good. I'm not sure I could even buy the materials for what they were charging. They're just looking for some money to uh, to cover the cost of, of, of what it costs to build these. And I got to say, this is... This is a pretty sturdy unit. I'll I'll show you a give you a closer look here, but this thing is stout. The welds are fantastic. I got to say they did a great job. There's very little porosity in the welds. Uh, this is probably far better built than you know any store bought stuff you're going to buy, especially if it is an imported item. And uh, furthermore, I just rather I'd rather support our, our local kids learning trades. Uh, there's absolutely we need more of that. Uh, but I've always wanted one of these things. I, I know very little about them, except I've got a good theory on how it works. But we're going to try it out here today and, and see how it goes. A little closer shot of the, the stove itself. And you can see they built out of, uh, looks like, I'm going to say eighth inch, maybe. Not sure. I haven't measured it. But um, fairly sturdy steel, all mild steel, of course. They built a pretty good solid base there. And uh, they've used some uh, uh, tubing, some square tubing, and then welded to a, looks like a quarter inch plate, I guess. And then uh, probably eighth inch on the six by six, I'd, or he was not six by six, might be four by four tubes. And the uh, grate on top is welded. And then I'll come around the other side here. This area down here does two things. It lets air in underneath of your, your fire. And uh, it's also where you can clean out the ashes. And inside, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a shot of the inside of it, but there is a grate. Probably not. Anyway, there's a grate uh, welded into the bottom. You can see a couple of the, the welds right there. Uh, that'll hold up the, the uh, wood out of the way so that the ashes can fall away and there's a, always good airflow. So it's, it's, quite, it's quite well built. You can see, like I lift it up and I can move it around just by grabbing that. What they didn't put on was a, a handle to tip it over, but I think that's okay. You, you're gonna let it cool anyway before you actually Before you actually uh, empty it out or whatever. One of the things about rocket stoves is you want your wood fairly, fairly fine. Almost like uh, you could use uh, kindling. Something like that would be big enough. And actually, if you're in the woods or whatever, you could just use sticks and twigs and things like that. In fact, I'll probably end up throwing some of those in there as well, uh, especially to get it going. But I'll get a little more. Okay, I've got a fire starter going. Uh, I've got a few of these sticks that I just grabbed from a forest up there. And you just feed them in like that. Get our fire going.
literally been two minutes now and the wood is caught. You can definitely tell I've got a bit of a breeze coming in, which is of course making the, the, the fire catch much quicker, but we'll let that go and uh, and heat up. I can already start to feel some heat coming out the top here. It definitely took a little while to get going, longer than I thought, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm out here in winter time and it's windy and breezy and, and whatnot. I ended up putting a bunch of small sticks directly down here, and I had to use a little bit of extra fire starter just to get things going, but it seems to be going quite, quite good now. I can't hold, you know, and sometimes those flames will leap up above here. But we're going now. And I've got some coals in there, and I can see the rocket effect. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. A little closer. And I put a board, like a piece of plywood, over here uh, to uh, stop some of the wind from, from blowing it out. But you can, you can see the rocket effect of the flames kind of leaping up here now. So, uh, just about ready to go get a uh, frying pan and try and cook up something. So, through <laughs> trial and error here, learned a couple of things. You need to keep your wood smaller than you think you need to keep it. Um, this stick here <clears throat> is probably as big as you want to go. That one there was too big. I had to actually pull it out. That way you can get more in, probably can't see in there, uh, but you can get more surface area and more sticks in while you're burning. And see I got a little couple of things that fall through the grate there. The other thing I learned is that the other thing I've learned is that the steel will get hot. So you can see right there, it sank down into the ice. Same as there. So if you're out, you know, it'd be good to have this on something to keep it level that isn't going to melt underneath of you and uh, <laughs> tip over your stove. But uh, yeah, so far it's working. So we just uh, you can see the flames down in there, but you just kind of keep jamming the sticks down in there. They don't go down on their own. And we feed more in as we need to. A couple of things I'm learning here. Your wood needs to be really small, really small, like that's lots big and you just kind of keep jamming it in there once it gets going. And of course I'm out here in winter time, so I stuck it up on a couple of other sticks of wood so it wouldn't melt itself into the ice, which it was tipping over. And I don't know why it didn't occur to me that I need a lid over what I'm cooking. So, obviously, you know, to hold the heat in and cook what I'm cooking, you know, that's helpful. Now, obviously, this is going to work better in situations where it's not winter time. Uh, and it's ideal for if you're, if you, say, even if you're camping or rather than getting a big open fire going and cooking over an open fire, if you just want to cook some, boil some water quickly or do some cooking like this, you save a lot of wood. Uh, it doesn't burn very much, really. Uh, it concentrates all the heat into that one area of cooking. So, pretty efficient. Um, so far, I'm impressed.
So there you have it, my first test of a rocket stove. Uh, it's kind of fun. Pretty happy with how it turned out. As I said, I learned a couple of things. If you're doing this on ice, keep it up on something that isn't going to melt into the ice. Uh, it did, did take a little while to get it going, but now that it's going, it's good and hot. Like there's, there's good flames coming out of there and... Ow. And I, I am cooking outdoors, so... A little too hot, which is surprising because it's a kind of a windy, cold winter day. But yeah, um, I got nothing here to sell. <laughs> so there's no affiliate link or anything like that. If you're handy with welding and fabricating, you can kind of see the dimensions. I'm sure there's plans online to build, lots of plans online to build these things. Essentially, it's just four by four tubing. Uh, this one's cut out of 45, and they cut out and welded obviously all the way around into there. Um, there's another piece here that's been cut and angled nicely. We've got a quarter inch plate here on the bottom for a solid base, and uh, a couple of two inch square tubing for feet. And then there's uh, some some bars that go across, and uh, that's basically it. Oh, there, yeah, there's a grate on the bo very bottom. It goes right across there it's just like an expanded metal grate it's welded in there as well and that keeps the wood off the bottom and allows the airflow to come up <laughs> that that's it but to do all of this i'm i'm impressed with the precision of the cuts i'm percent i'm impressed with the welds uh how they put it together um i know what it does take to to do this properly so it's a great class project uh, St. Stephen High School, thank you for, for doing this kind of stuff. It, I, it's great to see that we had this kind of thing happening in our school. And uh, like I said, I will support that any day of the week. Um, but if you're interested in rocket stoves, I'm sure you can buy them online. I'm, I've seen lots of different videos about them and places that sell them and whatever. But um, not a difficult thing to make either. Uh, if you're handy with welding, and I've even seen them made out of just stacking up cement blocks and stuff. It is an efficient way of cooking uh, that won't burn up all of your wood supply. And uh, it's, it's just a handy thing to have. So if you're going camping, uh, if you are, you know, in an emergency situation, you need to cook stuff, boil water especially. Um, yeah, I... I can see us uh, making quite a bit of use of this. Thanks for watching.